Good morning. In this series of videos, we take you through the S4 conversion journey. In the first set of many that we will talk about, we discuss the top 10 things to watch out for before you embark on an S4 journey. The first one being data footprint. To reduce the timeline and complexity of a S4 conversion, the first thing you would have to do is to bring the systems into compliance by purging information that have reached end of life. Plan on an archiving strategy to trim down the size of the current database. By doing this, you are able to simplify the conversion process, business downtime, and also the size of the target HANA appliance. The second one is about custom code remediation. You will have to dig into the existing custom code repository and get rid of all your old unused custom code. This is more the process called custom code evaluation. And then, analyze your custom ABAP code with the simplification database and find out which objects need to be changed to get adapted to the SAP S4 HANA. Also, prioritize the list that you plan to adapt. The above mentioned steps will help the conversion and the testing process go smooth and will help in resource estimation for the same. Housekeeping is the key to this exercise. Number three, data validation. Post conversion, it becomes mandatory to validate the key master and transaction data across the source and target systems. Plan for an automated data validation methodology. This will ensure that we can stay within the stipulated business downtime. Number four, change management and code freeze. Prior to the start of the S4 conversion journey, ensure all open projects and change requests in development are released and move them all the way up to production. A code freeze during the project will minimize the risks by not introducing any new changes into the systems during conversion. Number five, a phased approach. Plan for a phased approach in the conversion. Start with the conversion on the sandbox with a copy of production data and include a comprehensive test cycle and training plan for the SMEs in the sandbox phase. If possible, include the testing with interfaces as well. Number six, backup policies and retentions. During the entire time frame of the project, plan on more frequent backups and log retentions on development and QA systems as well. This will ensure we can do point of time recoveries in case we have to roll back due to system and human errors. Faster backup and restore methodologies will definitely come in handy. Number seven, integrated cutover plan. Maintain an integrated and comprehensive cutover plan and follow it meticulously starting from development. This will ensure a seamless run in production. Number eight, training. S4 brings in a lot of change in user experience and business processes as well. Ensure that you plan and get the SMEs trained to handle the change and also train the user community who would be doing the testing. Number nine, testing. Identify the most frequent business processes and build automated test scripts around the processes to ensure a quicker and error-free test cycle. And the last one on reporting strategy. With the OLAP and the OLTP instances merged and with new data structures on the S4 database, it is advisable to start looking at the existing reports and identify the new reporting strategy that should be taken going forward.